Hi, and welcome back to Deep Six Wrestling. I'm your host, Just Pat, and this is another edition of Five Matches to Watch, the weekly series where I talk about five matches that happened from across the world of pro wrestling this past week and give you my personal recommendations. The only stipulation is that there can only be one match per show, so not an entire WWE card, not an entire New Japan card, not an entire AEW card, or anything else. You get the gist. With that being said, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below to Deep Six Wrestling. Hit the notification button so you always know when a new video comes out and leave a like on the video. Be sure to comment what your favorite match this past week was so we can see. And also be sure to follow us on Twitter over at Deep Six Wrestling. We live tweet, we, we post news, we post thoughts and opinions, and uh, we post our predictions for pay-per-view. So be sure to go follow us over there for all your wrestling coverage. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, kicking things off at number five this week, we have the number one contendership for the U.S. title gauntlet match from Raw with Rey Mysterio, Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Andrade, and Ricochet. And this was, this was really, it was really good stuff. Um, I saw some people overhyping it a bit. Like, people said that, like, Andrade and Ricochet were having, like, a barn burner on Raw, and, like, they were really good, and this is coming from some, somebody who loves both guys. Again, Andrade's, like, one of my favorite wrestlers in the world today, but they went for, like, under 10 minutes, and I wouldn't say it was a barn burner. Like, it was it was probably the best part about the match, besides maybe Rey Mysterio and Cesaro, but I wouldn't say a barn burner by any means. Now, that being said, I do think they are kind of positioning both guys to be future top guy main event talent within the company, uh, they have Andrade practicing English, and I believe it was on Instagram where he got a promo on, I think it was WWE's actual Instagram, might have been his, it was one of the two, but uh, it was him just sitting in like the seats of the arena, and it was him talking about the gauntlet match, and his English has improved vastly, this is coming from, like, when he showed up in NXT, I think he spoke, like, very little English, like, at all, and if it was, it was, like, very thick accented uh for his his mexican accent and he sounds so good uh, i'm assuming this has a lot to do with him and charlotte's relationship uh maybe she's teaching him or maybe she got him somebody to teach him or i, I don't really know maybe it was wwe but either way his his english is like vastly improving and that's a really good thing for him because he's easily one of the most talented guys in the company and obviously in the wwe there's a bit of a language barrier uh with how you know the booking sees people like you look at somebody like Shinsuke Nakamura arguably one of the best wrestlers in the world but he they never like they booked him as a top talent but never as the top guy on his brand like when he feuded with AJ Styles he had multiple opportunities to win the belt and he was connecting with the fans as both a face and heel at both times when the feud first started as a face and then when he turned heel but they just didn't pull the trigger on him so I'm hoping that's different for Andrade and that with his improved English they decide to like actually push him and for Ricochet, yeah, I mean, we all know Ricochet's great, but his mic skills are so, so bad. Uh, I I, I kind of question why they called him up so early. Like, I feel like he could have lasted in NXT for a while, and especially if you gave him promo classes down at the Performance Center. I feel like that would have really improved his stock. That's the only thing I'm really worried about Ricochet is if he needs to cut promos, he's not going to be able to. Um, so, you know, maybe give him promo classes on the side or something, or pair him with a manager. I don't really know what to do with him, but... Both guys have really high ceilings if they can capitalize on their positives and start to work on their negatives in terms of mic skills. Uh, as for the rest of the competitors here, you had Cesaro and Rey Mysterio opening the match in what I would love to see these guys have an actual feud, like maybe over the US title at a future point, because oh my god, this was great stuff. The crowd wasn't like too hot for this to begin with, but by the end of their little mini match here, I thought it was really great stuff. There was one spot where uh, Cesaro had Rey Mysterio up for like an electric chair and they went for the ropes and they went both went over the ropes and when Cesaro landed on his feet Mysterio was still on his shoulders really impressive stuff there uh, but Rey Mysterio picked up the win with a 619 followed by a five-star frog splash assuming this is another nod to Rob Van Dam and then he pins Cesaro Cesaro is eliminated Sami Zayn comes out starts beating down uh, Rey Mysterio and within under a minute he has rolled up Sami Zayn and Sami Zayn's eliminated um now, what we know now from SmackDown is that Sammy's going to be feuding with Alistair going into SummerSlam, which I'm sure the match will be really good. I don't think anybody sees Sami Zayn winning, but, you know, it's, it's good that he's getting at least on the card. Uh, but, man, 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 has Sami Zayn's stock fallen recently. Uh, what a shame, too, because he's so talented. I really hope he can recover from this, because he's going to be losing to Alistair, and he hasn't won anything in God knows when. 
So his split with Kevin Owens really just didn't benefit him at all, which is, again, a real big shame. Maybe they'll send Sammy to SmackDown and him and KO can feud. Who knows? Um... And then you had Mysterio and Andrade go for a bit, and this was really, really good stuff as well. And the big news coming out of this, besides Andrade pinning Mysterio again, was uh, that he ended up, after he pinned him, he started beating him down and then like, pretty much fully ripped off his mask on just a random Raw. Uh, and I mean, maybe these two are going to have a match at SummerSlam, but if they're not, this seems really strange to just have Andrade, like, demask Rey Mysterio in a, like, what's in, like, a month it's time it's just gonna be remembered as like a nothing gauntlet match but interesting stuff there and then ricochet came out made the save those two went for a little under 10 minutes and ricochet picked up the win wins the number one contendership for uh the u.s title for SummerSlam. will face aj styles should be another really good match but yeah this was this was good stuff uh raw was actually pretty good this week i thought it was better than smackdown um so you know definitely if you haven't watched raw or if you've just like heard about it i definitely say at least check out the the gauntlet match and maybe the uh the raw tag team triple threat match but that's about it for this one okay so coming in at number four we have tomohiro ishii versus hiroki goto from night 12 of the g1 climax 29 over in new japan and i just finished watching this match right before this video and whoo boy what a what a what a slug fest i would call this these two just went at it uh they're both really good they have great chemistry together they always have and i believe they had a match last year in the, yeah last year they had one in the g1 climax it was also really good this one i think if it was in front of probably if you put it in front of a little bit of a smaller crowd maybe like corican if you put it in corican hall i think this match would have really been elevated a bit much this crowd was kind of iffy the entire night they they were good at some points but other points they were kind of all over the place but uh overall this match was really good uh not my match of the tournament not even i wouldn't even say this is ishii's best match of the tournament probably goto's but um just as a whole this really clicked for me i thought these two the intensity they brought was just incredible. Their headbutts looked great. Their their strikes looked great. Oh my god. Uh, Ishii's been doing this thing the entire tournament. I mean, he's been doing it as Ishii for a while, but just where he... It's not no-selling, I would say, but just, like, taking a hit and then just, like, powering through it and just standing there. Uh, I, I always loved that. I thought him versus... Him versus Cobb was really good for that, and even him versus Moxley also brought that. But uh, this was definitely a different match than him versus Moxley. But yeah, uh, him and Goto had a great match here. That's really all I can say about it. You know, uh, they're both having pretty good G1s. I didn't think Ishii was going to have this good of a of a tournament, but you know, I'm I'm glad he is because I did have him to win in my predictions. Uh, I I surprisingly had him to beat Ishii. I think he's a really good challenger for Ishii come uh, fall time. You know, when they need title challengers, so beating him here makes sense to me. And yeah, this was this was really good. Uh, definitely go check it out if you have New Japan World or if you can find it anywhere else. It's definitely worth watching, I would say, even if you're not like a New Japan fan. Uh, if you just want to see two guys, two bigger guys uh, beat the beat the ever living tits out of each other, this is definitely a match to watch for. And you know, again, I'll say it. I say it anytime I talk about the G1 climax this year, but Ishii is my MVP. There is not a match he's had that I have not liked. He is absolutely killing it and i really 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 truly hope that within like from from september to i don't even know a little time after wrestle kingdom next year i really hope he gets a title shot against okada i think those two would tear it down and honestly if okada still got the belt i really wouldn't mind ishii taking it off of him because i think ishii deserves a run as iwgp heavyweight champion for sure no no doubt in my mind but uh definitely go check out goto versus ishii over on new japan world you won't regret it So, for my number three pick this week, I'm choosing Mike Kanellis versus Drake Maverick from this week's 205 Live. And, you know, these past three weeks, like this week, the previous week, and the one before that, 205's main event have legitimately been match the year contender. Uh, we had, starting off this trend, we had Chad Gable versus Jack Gallagher in a rematch from their first uh, encounter on 205 Live. Uh, then we had Drew Gulak versus Isaiah Swerve Scott last week, which is my favorite of the bunch. And then we have uh, Mike Kanellis versus Drake Maverick. In just an in, in terms of storytelling, this is probably I mm, it's not, it's definitely between this and Kofi versus Brian at Mania. In terms of just pure storytelling factor for a match, I would probably put these two as some of the best of the year across the board, like in all of wrestling. This was absolutely great. This is Maverick's first match on 205 Live as a brand. And I thought he really, really showed what he's capable of. Like, he, his, the way he sold this match, like, 
oh my god it's just like just thinking about this match like gives me goosebumps it was that good and like the crowd was so into this this might be like the most over 205 match like ever and that's that's a testament to both guys mike canellis like he like i know how he looks on raw like as like the cuckold like of maria canellis obviously that's not like the most flattering performance for him but he's doing a good job with that like that's objectively speaking he is doing good work there and on 205 live his character is so much better uh it's just it, it's not humiliating it's not uncomfortable it's just him as as who he is and i really think his portrayal of himself on 205 live and just showing how versatile he is on raw proves that while mike not be might not be like the best wrestler uh in in terms of in ring i think combined with him being uh you know really he's he's good as like an in ring worker but he can go over the top with his with his character work and i think it's really showing that he has the potential to be something special in this company if booked correctly and i'm a big fan of that uh, but Drake Maverick and him together, again, similar to Ishii and Goto, have excellent chemistry. And I really, really, I know that there was a WWE.com exclusive interview after 205 Live with Maverick saying that he's not going to enter the cruiserweight division. I really hope that's not true. I hope they bait and switch and put him in. I don't know who I would put as the new GM because I think if Maverick steps down, you need a new GM. I think once 205 got an actual like general manager, I really think the quality improved. Because you kick things off with Brian making Maverick like the GM, and then you had that big tournament that led into the crowning of, I think it was Cedric as champion. Yeah, it was Cedric versus Ali, and Cedric won the belt there. Um, I just, you know, it's just two hundred five so good. If you're not watching it and you have the network, I don't know what you're doing. It's like, it's one, of, it's easily the best show on the network. Like I genuinely believe that this is the better wrestling show than two or NXT. 205 Live is where it is, and definitely, definitely, even if you haven't seen an episode of 205 Live, go watch this match. It's so good. I don't even know how long it is. I just lost myself in, like, the actual wrestling. Like, the story they told was so engaging. Just absolute hats off, claps. Just, yes, everything I can think of, all the praise in the world to Drake Maverick and Mike Kanellis, because this match delivered in spades. Okay, so my number two pick this week, you know, while I really do think that Maverick and Canellas had potentially a match of the year candidate in terms of, like, storytelling, I do want to say that the, my number two pick is probably the better wrestling match, but it doesn't have a good story because it, there's not much of a story here. Um, but in terms of wrestling, I'm going to give it to this one. Uh, it is Zack Sabre Jr. versus Will Ospreay from Night 11 of the G1 Climax 29. So if this is kind of a, like, I, I would really put number two and three on this list as a tie this week, I think. These two matches are equal but different, and so it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for the, that extra bit of storytelling that you want, then go watch Maverick versus Canellis. And if you want that just like pure wrestling, watch Osprey versus Zack Saber Jr. But uh, about the match, these guys just uh, they're they're both having great years in terms of like wrestling. Obviously, Saber's not having the best tournament. Neither is Osprey, to be honest. But uh, you know, and I'm kind of shocked about that. I had Osprey going to the finals. That's I, that's not happening. I believe he's already eliminated. But, uh, you know, these two just absolutely tore it down. Uh, you know, it says something for two guys that are both eliminated from the tournament that they had this quality of a match. Um, Sabre is so good. He's easily, uh, like, on the terms of, like, my favorite technical wrestlers in the world, and honestly, three of my favorite wrestlers in the world, uh, Drew Gulak, Dan O'Brien, and Zack Sabre Jr. are all up there. They're both, or all three of them, are absolutely phenomenal at what they do, and they're all so different from each other, which is another great thing. Uh, just imagining matches between the three of them is just, like, insane and at least we can get brian versus gulak at some point maybe who knows maybe brian will go to 205 live i would really you know there were rumors of it but now there's rumors saying that him and roman reigns are facing each other at SummerSlam. if that's the case as as good as roman and brian are together because they had a match in 2015 i just i can't like i really would prefer if it was you know brian and gulak just like just imagining just the oh, I'm just yeah it'd be good um but yeah this match was this was really solid there were some excellent excellent uh just sequences here uh throughout the match um these two just out wrestle each other back and forth and I think that also says a lot about Osprey because I know a lot of people see him as like the flippy guy who's willing to like kill himself in matches but he's also really really technically gifted and I really think Sabre can have a good match with anybody. This guy could literally wrestle a broom and would... I know that that's, like, a cliche thing to say about, like, really good wrestlers, but I genuinely believe that about Zack Sabre Jr. And I say the same thing for Dan O'Brien. I think both of those guys could wrestle a broom and have a good match. Um, but, again, if you're looking for just, like, pure wrestling, like, the best pure wrestling match of the past week, definitely go check out Will Ospreay 
or Zack Sabre Jr. from Night 11 of the G1 Climax. I, it's, I feel like this is every technical wrestling fan's like wet dream. These guys just like went at it. Uh, yeah, definitely. This is this is a match to watch. I would say that again. But if you're not into like technical stuff and submissions, then this probably isn't for you. But if you're like me, this is definitely something you want to keep your eyes on. All right. So coming in at number one this week at the cream of the crop, we have another G1 Climax match. I know it's a bit overwhelming, but again, we I like New Japan, and these guys are delivering match of the year candidates. And here we have what is arguably going to be a lot of people's match of the year. We have Kenta versus. Kazuchika Okada from Night 9 of the G1 Climax, and oh my god, uh, I, when I first saw this match, I wasn't, I was into it, but I didn't think it was like, oh, this is like the match of the year. I watched it again, and my mind was blown. These guys just went at it, like, oh my god, uh, Ken, this is the best Kenta's looked since leaving WWE, hands down. Or, no, I'm gonna rephrase that. This is, the, <laughs> this is the best Kenta's looked since before he came to WWE. This is insanity. Like, I'm not gonna curse, but like, I would put an F word there. This is, th th these guys, their chemistry is great. I, again, Okada is easily one of the best wrestlers in the world, but Kenta clearly held his own here. He wasn't like carried to a good match. He delivered as the like he delivered as well. Uh, just like these these two were brutal to each other. There was one spot uh, with, that is a great gif of just like Kenta just slapping the crap out of Okada. Oh my god! Uh, I really I, I can't say enough good things about this match. Uh, this. Well, I said the, the previous two matches are up there for, you know, people's matches of the year or matches of the week, whatever. This undeniably is the best match that happened this past week and arguably one of the best matches of the entire year from across the world of in, just every wrestling promotion. And, like, that's that's the thing about the G1 Climax is you can get that at any time. You know, there's several matches here in, the, in this tournament that are on my match, uh, match of the year list so far, whether it's this or, like, Ishii versus White or... Ishii, or Ishii versus Moxley. There's there's plenty of them, but this was something on a whole other level. Uh, these I was actually genuinely shocked that Kenta lost here. I really thought Kenta had Okada's number, but yeah, uh, Okada might pull one out of you know his ass. He might he might go undefeated. Uh, that's I going into this tournament. I would have never guessed that, but here we are, and Okada's still undefeated. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is this is something special. This is, feels like a match that people aren't going to forget for a long time. If you've seen it, and if you haven't seen it, I really, really strongly urge you to go see it. And even if you like, this is again, if you don't watch New Japan and you have seen Kenta as Hideo Itami, but not as Kenta, this is the match to watch. Not and like I really praised him and Tanahashi from a week or two ago, but this is the one. This is the match that is going to sell people on Kenta outside of WWE in 2019. This man is incredible. He is such a talent. It feels like he's finally gotten out of his ring rust stage. It feels like he's back to where he needs to be. And th the intensity he's delivering in is just incredible. Like his his ring work is great. His his persona is like so defined. It's just it's great to watch. Like this tournament where uh, this was night 9 of the tournament and he just feels like he's come out of his shell. There's still nine more nights to go after this. I mean, I just I'm so happy for him cuz you know, it's really it's really good stuff to see. So yeah oh boy this is again i could go on for a while about this match but just incredible stuff here it feels like every okada match is a really good like final sequence and this is another one that has it i just oh i'm at, just imagine if like kento won this match is like how much everybody would be talking of like oh my god kento just beat okada uh, it would be insane just like oh i just this is crazy this tournament's been so good this is easily like my favorite g1 climax uh the booking is genuinely surprising at points, uh, and I mean it always is. There's always like big upsets, but like the whole Naito situation, the entirety of B Block is just uh, crazy. Uh, that whatever everything that's going on over there, and I think there's let's see who's it. So you have Moxley in the lead with ten. Then you have uh, Ishii, Goto, Moxley, Naito, and Juice. I think all have six points in second place. That's crazy. Uh, so, again, if you're not watching the G1 Climax, I really strongly urge you to go watch at least, like, uh, there's only, like, a week or two left. It ends the day after SummerSlam, and so I guess, like, a little over a week left. Um, you're, you're missing out on some of the best wrestling in the world. I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but it's definitely worth watching. But, uh, like I said, you know, some matches aren't for everybody. So this, li this week's list was pretty diverse in terms of what you're getting. You know, you have a big slugfest between two two hard hitters in Goto and uh, Ishii, and then you have 
you know, you have the the Raw. If you if you like WWE main roster wrestling, you have the Raw Gauntlet match that we had on here. Uh, you know, that gives you a light at some future uh, WWE main eventers, most likely. And also, you know, you got your you know, your Rey Mysterio veteran status in there. You also had the the Drake Maverick, Mike Kanellis, in terms of storytelling, easily the best of the entire week across all brands. Uh, and then you had your pure wrestling match between Sabre and uh, Osprey. And then you had just all across the board, story, wrestling, everything you could want wrapped into one here in Okada and Kenta. So, you know, these are all pretty laid out. I think if you want to go watch them, you can find them all anywhere, pretty much. You can find, if you have, you can find Raw, I guess, on Hulu now. Yeah, because there's a delay for the network. But Raw's on Hulu, or you can find it on YouTube, probably. You got Maverick and, Maverick and Canellas on the network for 205 Live. And then you got the three New Japan matches all on New Japan World. So, you know, not really too hard to find. And all of them are definitely worth watching for different reasons. But as, as a whole, that's my list this week. So thank you for joining me. And be sure to follow us over on Twitter at Deep Six Wrestling uh, for live tweeting, coverage of New Japan, coverage of WWE, coverage of AEW, just everything. We try to cover it all. Be sure to subscribe to us here at Deep Six Wrestling. Hit the subscribe button below. Also, be sure to hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications. So anytime we post a video, you'll be notified and you can come right here. Come watch us. We love it. And also, definitely be sure to leave a like on the video. Or if you didn't like it, dislike it. I encourage that. You know, I like to hear if people agree or disagree. And as always, if you've made it to the end of the video, leave a comment down below of your favorite matches from this past week. I really like to hear what everybody liked if you're watching this again. Uh, but yeah, as a whole, you know, that's about it for me. I'll see you next week for five matches to watch uh, as we kick things off. Uh, we're just getting into it August here. We got a whole month of wrestling, so... I'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Five Matches to Watch. Until then, peace.